Hello and welcome to Tatparya Books. So it's been over 15 days since Russia attacked Ukraine and the economic and cultural fallout from this event is covered in the news every day. On the economic front, imports from Russia are being banned and countries are cancelling all kinds of economic ties with Russia. On the cultural front, the impact is more on sports, where sporting events either involving Russian uh, athletes or uh, to be conducted in Russia are being frowned upon or cancelled. Now, in this context, I came across a story where an Italian university was banning Dostoevsky's books or suspending classes around Dostoevsky's books. And it raised an important question. Why would something like this happen? It's probably a little obvious when you think about it. Most people uh, would have very little associated with Russia in their homes on the day-to-day -day basis, except for maybe books. Books are the one thing that uh, symbolizing a particular country or region that a lot of people probably possess. So it is understandable that books are first objects which get attacked in times of war or in times of distress. I wanted to examine this question, especially in the context of the Russia-Ukraine war and try to see if there are if there are maybe two sides to this coin. I'm not going to take a side. I'm not going to say a certain book should be banned or a writer should be banned uh, in times of war. Um, I think that's a question that uh, readers have to make for themselves. This is not in reference to any kind of greater cancellation of writers for their, any kind of political position that they might have taken. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm only looking specifically at Russia and Ukraine vis-a-vis -vis this conflict. There were two reasons that I could think of when I thought about why anybody would want to stop reading Russian books. Now, the first one is more around content and taste. So when you think of books written by people like Dostoevsky or Tolstoy or Chekhov or any one of the great Russian writers, you also know that there is a lot of Russian character, Russian patriotism, Russian spirit being mentioned in these books. So in the context of a war, if you're against Russia, you might find something like this being distasteful. This kind of references might be against a certain kind of taste or a certain kind of uh, feeling going on right now in the world. The other thing is probably also very relevant is that especially in a university or, or, a, or a place of study when you are reading Russian authors you are creating a con context to talk about Russia. So you are discussing these writers, you're discussing feelings, what they're going through, what is the society like and so the discussion becomes a lot about Russia and very less about Ukraine on the other hand. So there might be an obvious feeling here that, you know, let's not talk so much about Russia at this point and let's maybe concentrate on something else or let's talk about Ukraine and devote that time to Ukraine. On the other hand, it does not make any sense to ban writers who were writing 150 years ago. Tolstoy and Dostoevsky are not writing about Russia as it stands today. They were writing about Russia and the problems that it had or problems of humanity 150 years ago. So why ban them now? As far as I know, I don't think either Tolstoy or Dostoevsky or Chekhov mention Putin in their books. Well, for in Tolstoy's case, I might not be entirely certain. He has so many characters in War and Peace. But you get the point. Two, if you know anything about Russian writers, you would know that most of them were subversive in nature. What do I mean by that? For a long period of time, Russia was ruled or is ruled by authoritarian leaders who did not like views being expressed which were against their views. So in this case, when these writers wrote things that the rulers did not like, they paid a price for it. Dostoevsky was almost shot to death and people like Isaac Babel were actually killed for having views which did not match with the views of the ruler. So when we actually ban these books, we are missing that context these writers bring to our view. They talk about Russia and they talk about what is wrong with uh, Russia much better than anybody from outside could do. So you would want to read them. And point number three, 
and this is this is to do with writers who are almost 150 years old or you know maybe more than 100 years old these are not writers who are alive now these are not writers who are writing in today's context or writing about russia today so, but more importantly the work that they did especially people like tolstoy or dostoevsky or chekhov or isaac babel these guys wrote about russia and those the books that they wrote became part of the cultural heritage of the entire world they are set in russia or they are written in the russian language but they have they since then have influenced writers and thinkers all over the world so they they don't really belong just to russia they belong to the world to culturally integrated so when we ban something which is so culturally integrated with the rest, rest of the world and world literature you kind of you kind of are depriving yourself or of, of some of the really great things that writing and literature can do in the world today these are my thoughts like i said i'm not going to subscribe to any particular view i leave it to the to the viewer to the reader to make that uh, make that decision for themselves but this is what i thought thank you for watching tatparya books